Hi there. What I'm going to do in this video is take you from zero to making your first API request to OpenAI. So OpenAI are the creators of ChatGPT. So this is the way that you can programmatically communicate with their large language models like GPT-3, GPT-4. So it's exactly the same as what's going on when you speak to ChatGPT and what goes on behind the scenes and how they communicate with their systems to respond to you. So you're not gonna to have to write any code in order to do this. I want to get you up and running, playing around with it, doing the fun stuff, and then you can look at the more complicated things later on. Um, I'll also hopefully make a series of videos that help you build more complicated applications, but this is just to show you how you can communicate and what it's doing when you communicate with their system. So some prerequisites to get started, you need a OpenAI API key, which is going to look like this. You can sign up for that at OpenAI. There's a video guide here in order to do it also. I think you get some free credit, so you should be able to do that free, where well, you can definitely sign up for free, um, but I think you also get some credit, so it shouldn't cost you. And also, you're going to need a Google Colab account. So in the description of this video, you'll find a Google Colab link, and that's going to hold all of the co code ready-made. So you can just click that, and you're going to get to this code. You don't have to write anything. But you'll need a Google Colab account to do that, and again, that is free. And what Google Colab is, it's just a place to run your code that's in the browser, so it doesn't matter if you're on Windows, Mac, anything, it will work seamlessly. And this is Python code that's running just for your reference, but not important. I'm not going to go into the detail of anything. Let's just get you making that first API call and having a play around. So what we do when we're in here, we install the packages. I can go into detail on packages in a future video again. I don't want to get into that boring stuff yet. You're going to save your API key in the environment. So that's essentially saying, when I make this API call, this is the key that you need to use to identify that it's me. So that means that you're allowed to make that call. When you save your API key, you need to put it in between these speech marks. You're going to be replacing my API key. I'll have deleted this so it won't be working. Otherwise, everyone would abuse it probably. Um, but yeah, it needs to be in there. If you do it and you do it like this or something, it's going to fail. So you need to make sure that it's done exactly as is. So we've done that. Okay, so let's make our first API call. So the prompts that we've given, so this is how you communicate with large language models, is you provide a prompt and it's instantly giving us that back. So when you're on ChatGPT and you're typing your message, this is what it comes back with. And it's, it's doing the same thing in the background. So if we do our first bit of what's referred to as prompt engineering, we'll say, give me 10 baby names. They must be three carat letters long. So that's instructing it and, and telling it how to behave. And you can see it's, the prompt engineering has made it respond in a certain way and you can get very complex with what, what you do with that. You can have huge prompts that instruct the model how to behave, but you can see it's responding based on what you've put. Or you could say, where is... So you're getting the responses. So that's the API call that you've made. We've made that call to the OpenAI endpoint. We've identified who we are with your API key. There's some settings here that aren't too relevant for now, but I can go into the detail in that in the future. And we've printed the response, and this is the response that's printed back from uh, OpenAI. So if I removed this here, it would print less of the response. You can see it's just printing the raw response there. If I put that back in place, it extracts just the chat element from that large response that's come back. So that's your first API call. Have a play around with it. If you have any problems getting it working, please leave a comment in the video, uh, in the comment section, and I'll try and get back to you. 
but you can then evolve that in terms of your prompts, what it's doing. You could give examples to get those perfect responses back. And that is the basis for communicating with these large language models, which can then progress into building applications. And hopefully I'll create some videos that actually demonstrate how you can do that in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.